This is Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily with Andrew Hustler Patterson and Michael Remus. All right, <laughs> we're back. Shout out to everyone that's made it to, I guess this is technically part two of today's Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. We had a nice little July, midsummer Jets lineup conversation for about 15 to 20 <laughs> minutes and boom. It was great. But yeah, you know, it was fun. I enjoyed it, folks. I'm sure it's up there on the YouTube channel. If you if you're just joining us right now, this is the main show. We've got Morgan Barron coming up in a couple minutes. Mike McIntyre as well. We're going to talk open a little NFL with Jeff Feinberg a little later on. But yeah, Remo, that was um that was a very unfortunate and rare power outage. And I know there's a lot of people blaming the laptop considering laptop gate that happened in nashville but in fact this is not this can't not even be tracked back to the province of manitoba this you know when in doubt blame ottawa for our problems and uh it was actually a power outage in ottawa because our pal alex lard is doing the show today and uh at a certain point if you don't get any juice you don't got any show and that is unfortunately what we've been dealing with for the last 10 minutes yeah, we're back. It's all good. We set it up again. So uh, if you found us, uh, awesome. Welcome. We're excited to have Morgan Barron on and uh, move on with the show. But we did have some – that was maybe some of our best uh, mid-July Jets lineup talk as we're as it is mid-July. Um, you know, we're kind of in – we're waiting for Kenny Lawler to speak uh, for the Bombers. The sea Bears don't play again uh, until Thursday. So – Look, so and I think people have said, "Hey, are the Jets going to add?" Like, I think they're pretty much done here, and we'll likely see uh, Mark Shifley still in training camp, unless something crazy here happens. But just based on what moves that we've seen, I can't. I don't. I think it's it's done, unless there's like an Eric Carlson uh, trade brewing. Well, uh, listen, I'm not saying anything's done until I see what the Boston Bruins do. I mean, yeah. if, if there is one spot that makes a lot of sense for Shifley. Um, a team that I think the Jets would like to engage in to deal with a spot for him to play top six, potentially number one center for a very good team with some very good players. Boston is that spot. Um, and this goes back to waiting to see what's happening with Elias Lindholm, because I do believe he's the number one choice for the Boston Bruins. But I mean, we were told at the draft that they're proceeding as if Bergeron and Krejci aren't coming back. And if that's the case, that is a massive gap down the middle that the final year of Mark Shifley's contract might be there. And who knows? I mean, maybe there is an extension for Mark Shifley from the Boston Bruins, knowing the need that they have going forward. So needless to say, this will be something. And I'll kick this around with Mike when he joins us a little bit later on on the program as well. Um, Remo, just before we get to Morgan Barron, uh, Kenny Lawler back today. And I, <laughs> I was talking with Dusty on the lock shop. By the way, he will join us tomorrow. And we were talking about last week. Like, last week was one of the best weeks of Canadian Football League action start to finish I can remember in forever. I mean, even the Hamilton-Edmonton game on Thursday was bizarre in many ways. Got a great, great TV number. And then you had the crumb back at the hands of the Bombers. That absolute classic shootout between Saskatchewan and Calgary on Saturday night. And, I mean, we basically didn't even mention that game between Montreal and Toronto last week. I gotta tell you, it was had been the entertainment value. I know there's been a many issues with the CFL season. Certainly the stats continues to be a bit of a joke. It's really hampered the broadcast in some way, but our pal Dusty's had no shortage of uh, show stopping moments to uh, get all fired up about on TSN and, uh, Man, the Elks are coming in here at a bad time. A very angry, pissed-off team that's getting Kenny Lawler back after what happened in Ottawa. Uh, I know they're off today. Tomorrow's the one through, and I'm sure they're quite happy to get right back to action as soon as possible after what happened Saturday afternoon in Ottawa. Yeah, we. I didn't really get a chance to mention how awesome uh, all of last week's CFL games were us uh you had the opener where for the most of the game you know that saskatchewan uh sorry edmonton hamilton game uh really sucked but then hamilton came back and edmonton just uh, really 
really blew it. But what, Friday, overtime, uh, Toronto, Montreal. And Saturday, overtime, Winnipeg, Ottawa. Down to the final second, Calgary, Saskatchewan. Um, you had, you know, teams and but teams in five of the eight teams scoring over 30 points. So you had a lot of scoring. You had close games. It was a fantastic weekend of CFL football. And it was disappointing. The Bombers, they were not able to win against Ottawa in a game that they had, uh, you know, uh, they had a firm grasp of, and it definitely slipped away. But, uh, you know, we, they rebounded, you know, with two good games after the loss to BC. I imagine it is a short week here against Edmonton, but uh, they'll rebound. You can't take that team lightly. And I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how Kenny Lawler improves this offense and, um, you know, what he, what he can bring in his first game back uh, with the Bombers after signing as a free agent this offseason. Yeah, so we get into a little bit of bomber talk and, uh, you know, a bunch of the local stories with Mike McIntyre, the Winnipeg Free Press, who's going to join us in a little bit. Um, but as I mentioned, Morgan Barron coming up in just a second. Um, Remo, did you see the end of that Angels-Yankees game last night? Uh, I know Otani. Otani, yeah. I know that he's, like, absolutely on fire here, Hustler. It's this Otani story, like... Like, is he the greatest player ever of the last, like, I don't know, 100, 100 years? Yes. Because he's doing he's Listen, doing the answer things. to that is absolutely yes. And when you think about the guys that, you know, were playing in the Babe Ruth era, I mean, listen, I don't know if we can even compare the athletes, the human beings at that time to right now. But I brought this up because I, I, this stat is... I remember calling him the Japanese Babe Ruth when he first came over, and it was just sort of neat because he was a two-sport player. Listen to these numbers. Babe Ruth had 159 home runs in his first 674 career games, and he had – it was 58 and 18 – sorry, 35 and 18 in his first 455 career innings. Otani after last night. With that game tying homer, they ended up winning the game in extras. 160 home runs in his first 674. So one more than the Sultan of SWAT. And he is 35 and 19 in his first 455 career innings pitched. Almost identical numbers. And Babe Ruth was thought to be the greatest player in Major League Baseball history forever. Uh, and now Otani. And uh, listen, when we talk about this, obviously there's a lot of intrigue as to if he gets dealt at the trade deadline. I think he's going to sign a billion dollar contract in the off season, dude. <laughs> With a B, uh, like ten years, a billion dollars. I don't think is out of the question at all for what he's doing. At the All Star break, what first in uh, home runs, first in slugging, first in OPS, uh, as and then as a pitcher, what fourth in strikeouts. First in uh, hits allowed per nine innings, uh, you know, fantastic ERA. Like uh, it's he's on pace for what sixty home runs. The AL record for home runs is sixty-two, set by Aaron Judge last year. He's one of the best hitters, one of the best pitchers. <laughs> Absolutely incredible what we're watching. And I feel like Otani mania, maybe because of the trade, because of the contract and the trade you know, speculation that's happening. Like they're asking Phil Nevin during the game, Huss, on Sunday Night Baseball about <laughs> trade speculation. So I think it's heating, It's uh, really heating up. And it is a damn shame that the Angels have had these two top players in the league over, over the last, what, six-plus years, well, at least with Mike Trout. And they've done nothing, absolutely nothing, um, in terms of team success, postseason success. And, you know, you'd like to see him go on a team – that can actually do something here. It's crazy how you have these two players that are so incredible and uh, it does not lead to wins. Maybe this year a bit different, but uh, the American League is just totally stacked right now. Yeah, even if they sign, if they somehow extended him to a bit of a shorter term deal, they'd still have a billion dollars tied up in Mike Trout and Shohei Otani. And uh, <laughs> again, they just never win, although they did last night. Pick them tonight between the uh, Yankees and the Angels. We'll touch on that in the cool bet lines. Dusty and I put together a little partner parlay today with a nice little boost over in the cool bet exclusive. So we'll touch on that end of the program. When I go for five in a row 
winning days at the track as well over at Assiniboia Downs. But Mike McIntyre is going to come up in about 20 odd minutes or so. And uh, we got a very special guest coming up right now in just a moment. Before we do that, got to give a big thank you to our friends at Modern Man Barber Shops, who now have eight locations in the city of Winnipeg, including the two newest ones on Pemina Highway or over on Plessy Road. Modern Man Barber Shops have everything that men need to be looking their best. A variety of grooming services among haircuts, beard shaping, shaves, color services, and more. You can book your look and make an appointment at modernmanbarber.com and follow them on Instagram over at Modern Man Barber Shops. I I'm not going to say today is pool weather, but we are uh, we are just really getting into July. El Nino has much more for us. And listen, 2023 would be a great time if you're thinking about it to take the plunge with Aquatech. Visit aqua-tech.ca to design your own custom pool. Their team can provide on-the-spot pricing from designers as well as financing options that suit you. And whole home renovations start with Aquatech as well. With thousands of rentals as their foundation, let them upgrade any space in your home. Aquatech's ready to make your rental dreams a reality. Learn more about design, pricing, and financing options at aqua-tech.ca. Well, hey, we got another beautiful weekend coming up. Long weekend in a few weeks for August. And I will tell you that Manitoba Battery, Donnie and his staff, have everything that you need to power the best summer ever for you and your family. And they'll help you save money and time doing it. Listen, whatever you're planning, whether it's a camper, whether it's a lawn tractor, whether you've got some ATVs, a boat, sea dews Manitoba Battery has the battery that you need. And the best part about, they've got the best price on it anywhere in the city, beating the pants off the big box stores while shopping local. And to make it even better, Donnie and the gang are going to save you time doing the things that you love at this point of year with your family because with any purchase over 60 bucks, they're delivering it to you for free anywhere inside the city of Winnipeg. It's that simple. Get on over at manitobabattery.com. Check out everything you need. Give them a phone call. Their great staff will help you out. And you can always pop in, if you like, in person and see the magic happen there at 1026 Logan Avenue. Uh, wow, just two days until game day at IG Field. Thursday nighter. And I know there'll be a lot of people taking Friday off. And I know there'll be a lot of people enjoying those Canadian Club and ginger ales in the stands as the Bombers look to get back into the win column. Of course, Canadian Club is the official spirit of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and Canada's favorite Canadian whiskey. And while you can pick up all the great Canadian club products at your local Manitoba Liquor Mart, the CC and Ginger is the drink of the summer, and it's now available at your local beer vendor as well. And in singles, in 473 milliliter cans. CC and Ginger, Canadian club, the Bombers WST, a winning team. Pick it up today at your favorite beer vendor or your local Manitoba Liquor Marts. All right. We'll get to many more local stories coming up with Mike McIntyre. One of the things we will certainly talk about was the new contract by Jet Winger Morgan Barron, who, of course, made headlines with that incredible comeback to the game after getting a hideous gash and all those stitches in the uh, playoffs against the Vegas Golden Knights. Fresh off his new contract signing, Morgan Barron joins us now on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Morgan, what's going on? Great to have you back on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Yeah, not too much. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, first things first, congratulations on uh, inking a new deal. Uh, obviously, I mean, you had an arbitration date. I'm sure that's not anything anybody wants to get to. Um, oh, how involved were you in all of this? And uh, tell us what you know and how it all came together. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say I was too involved in it, obviously. That's why we have our agents. I didn't really want to be too involved with it. So, um, yeah, just really relieved it got done. Like you said, nobody really wants to get to that arbitration date, but just a good mechanism to kind of put a stop, uh, kind of a deadline, I guess, on when the contract needs to be done by. So, um, yeah, relieved to have it done. And, uh, you know, I feel like it really started to come together probably a week, week or so ago is when we felt like we were close on the numbers. And then, um, obviously, just finding a solution where both sides are happy within the last few days. So um, I'm really excited about it. Well, and, and I imagine, I mean, excited to, uh, you know, just have that behind you and excited to uh, get going on uh, two more years here in Winnipeg after – you know, a season where in a lot of ways, I, I, I'm sure um, 
you know, you established yourself as much of an regular NHL player as before. And I, I imagine, I mean, tell us about you, where your confidence level is going into this new contract after uh, the season. And uh, of course, a memorable part of the playoffs that you just had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited to get back. Um, I felt like I kind of built my confidence all season. It was my first full year in the NHL. So I um, was able to learn a lot. And I've really felt like the last two, three months of my season, I was playing my best hockey. So um, yeah, it's kind of put a little fire in my belly. I feel like I'm capable of a lot more than maybe I showed this year, which is always a good feeling. And, um, you know, I'm just excited. There's so much room to grow. And I think it's a great environment. With We're going to be able to remain competitive, I think, this season and hopefully get into the playoffs and make a push. So um, I'm really excited about getting back. And I, I really feel great about where the group is at right now. You know, I, I mean, in addition to talking about the team, um, you know, I mean, you came over in the cop trade. You have, what, 14 games at the end of the season. And then... Last year, your first full year in Winnipeg. Um, how much more comfortably are you here in Winnipeg? And now how have you enjoyed um, the city so far? And, you know, as far as uh, making it uh, your home for the next couple of years as you continue your pro career? Yeah, I feel a lot more comfortable with it. Uh, obviously, it takes a little while to get acclimated to a new place. But, um, you know, I'm really blessed and lucky. You have all your teammates to help you kind of get settled in and, and share their favorite spots, their favorite restaurants, all those things. So, um, yeah, definitely excited to get back into the city. I, you know, I've loved the food scene there. There's a, tons of great restaurants I've discovered. So, um, that's been great and just really enjoyed exploring, walking around and, uh, yeah, just getting to know the city a little bit, but, uh, I really enjoyed it. I'll have my girlfriend there with me this year, so she'll get to explore a little bit more as well. So, um, yeah, we're looking forward to getting back there late August or September. Uh, uh, Morgan, um, uh, just, you know, as far as just one more on the contract, um, I mean, you mentioned it's the reason why you pay the agents. I mean, they kind of take care of most of things. I mean, they just keep you kind of up to date. Hey, you know, things are looking pretty good. We're relatively close. Uh, and then you just get a phone call. Yep, yeah, it's done. Uh, we're going to send something over for you. Or uh, is there more to it than that? No, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. Obviously, at the end of the day, um, kind of present you with what the current contract looked like or what the most recent offer from the team is and, um, you know, advise you whether they think they're able to get more, whether, uh, you know, this is kind of the limit or, um, yeah, those types of things. So at the end of the day, it's always the player's choice. I mean, I think that's the main part of it is keeping the player happy and making sure that they're at a, a salary or wage where they feel valued. And, and um, for me, that was the biggest thing. And, um, you know, like I said, I feel like we got to a spot where I'm happy. I'm really excited to go back. And, um, you know, I think the team's happy to have me at that number as well. So it should be a good two years to kind of continue to prove myself. Morgan Barron of the Winnipeg Jets with us here on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Morgan, um, you know, there was a lot of anticipation of just, I mean, a ton of changes that could come with the Winnipeg Jets so far this year. There has been one big trade. Pierre-Luc Dubois, of course, is now a member of the Los Angeles Kings. Um, just interested in your perspective of the deal. And, I mean, do you remember playing against Velarde or uh, Alex Iafalo at all? And uh, any thoughts on uh, what they may bring to the team and how that forward unit might look a little different with PLDO out, but uh, three new players in competing for spots and trying to help the team uh, get Ws? Yeah, I mean, first off, obviously, Ubi's a big loss for us in terms of, you know, the ice time he played, the role he was able to play in, in producing and, um, you know, he's one of my close friends on the team. I'll definitely miss having him around, but I feel like he's in a place where, um, you know, he's going to be able to excel in his career and hopefully have a long, successful tenure in Los Angeles. And, um, you know, look at the pieces we got back. I feel like we've done really well. Um, you know, all those, all three of those guys can really play. I know playing against them a few times this year, um, you know, each unique players, but I think there were players who stood out to me and, uh, that you noticed pretty quickly. I mean, I follow has tons of speed and, um, <clears throat> Velarde, obviously, I think he scored a few goals against us, and Kapari was around in it as well. So, um, you know, three really good players. I think it just adds to the depth we're going to have. And um, you look at the team bag his head and how deep they were up front this year. And, um, you know, it was obviously a big part of their success down, down the playoffs and down the stretch. So, um, you know, if we can build something like that, I feel like we'll be in a good spot. And, and you know, I think we're well on our way. You know, and in a lot of ways, I mean, it could – I mean, depending on us and other changes, I mean, it could fundamentally sort of change the way the Winnipeg Jets roll four lines um, and look to take on teams. And as a guy that's been a big part of that third line, but I mean, if you want to do the delineation, if you will, between top six, bottom six, I mean, I would say that, you know, with the addition of these players, um, the responsibilities of scoring goals, of, um, you know, of playing more minutes is probably going to be distributed a lot more throughout one to 12 of that forward group. But I imagine that's something that excites you. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, you know, I feel like everybody in that lineup probably feels like they're capable of a little bit more than we showed at times this year. So um, no, that's all you can ask for is the opportunity, and then you hope that you're ready to prove yourself. And, um, you know, with the way last year ended, I think we have a lot of guys in that room who are really hungry and uh, who are going to take advantage of that opportunity. So, uh, you know, from everyone I've, I've talked to, we're really excited to get back to Winnipeg and get going. It's been a long off season already, and obviously we're starting to creep closer to camp. But um, just the way that roster is going to be made up, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and I think we're in, in store for a good season. Hey, Morgan, what are you like when uh, you're out of Winnipeg, you're back home on the East Coast in Halifax? Uh, uh, listen, certainly not as much right now, but leading into the draft, I mean, there is so much speculation and rumor going around, and a lot of it was around your club. Is that something you pay attention to very much, or uh, you kind of hear it from your buddies asking you about something, you're like, oh, no, I uh, haven't really been, uh, I had my finger on the pulse. Got, got to get a new contract first before I worry about everybody else. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, this year especially, I feel like it was uh, it was pretty hard not to follow it, right? Like, there's a lot going on, and, um, you know, I just follow hockey in general. So, um, you know, our team was obviously at the center of it quite a bit. But, um, yeah, I mean, you, you kind of try to bury your head a little bit. I know there's, there's so many rumors and speculation, like you said, and I don't think all that is necessarily good to wrap your head around. So, um, yeah, most of it was just kind of what came out from the team or, um, you'd hear, get a text from a guy or someone on the team, a teammate, and kind of have an idea of what's going on through that. But definitely followed it closely. I mean, it's going to affect my livelihood and, and in our competitiveness and all those things next year. So, um, yeah, I followed it loosely. Uh, Morgan, speaking of your head, how's your eye doing? How's the, uh, yeah, <laughs> how's doing the well. cut as it comes back? I can barely see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most people uh, seem to be happy with it or seem to be. I don't know my mom isn't thrilled with it still, but um yeah it's good i mean it's fine days you wake up and don't think about it until someone asks you about it so <laughs> you've brought it top of my mind for the rest of the day but yeah i'm sure uh, mom I'm, I'm sure mom is in reality quite happy that it happened in 2023 than 2003 hmm. or 1983 i'm uh, yeah. I, I have a feeling that there'd be a little bit more um, uh, the, the memories would be a lot more out there uh if it wasn't uh, i mean it really was kind of incredible to think about the amount of stitches and what those doctors did and uh, yeah. how contained it is and how good it looks now. Yeah, well, you know, they're plastic surgeons. We're lucky there's not plastic surgeons every rink, but believe it or not, there was a few plastic surgeons at the game in Vegas. So um, it was a pretty great place to have it happen to me, all things considered. And, um, you know, I'm, I'll always be grateful for them. They stitched me up and kept me looking as pretty as possible. So, um, you know, they didn't have much to work with, but they did a great job. The reaction to that really was wild. I mean, that was the ultimate hockey guy story. I mean, uh, going back, getting stitched up like that, coming back to the game in a playoffs. I mean, it was on the front of PTI. It was all over the place. Like, how much of that hit you? And uh, was there any interaction that particularly surprised you that uh, they were talking about what had happened to you and how you came back for the Winnipeg Jets in, uh, in the crunch? Yeah, this got a lot more attention than, than I thought it would. Um, so it picked up pretty quick. It was obviously I had a lot of text messages and stuff after the game. So um, it was nice to have people reaching out. I know my dad loves Charles Barkley. And there was something, I don't know what podcast it was on or something, him chuckling about it and talking about NBA players and NHL players and all this stuff. So um, he was particularly excited about that one, I think. But uh, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, they, they put the freezing in it with the needle and then stitched it up. So really, I didn't feel feel the side of my face for the rest of the game. And, uh, you know, the next few days were a little little tough, but as we got through that, it wasn't too bad. So I almost feel like I've been given a lot of credit that maybe I don't fully deserve. But, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a pretty crazy experience just going through all of it for a few days. Jets forward Morgan Barron with us here on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Um, how's your summer been? I mean, obviously, I'm sure you would have been uh, like to, to be a little shorter. I mean, uh, we talk mm. about what happened in the playoffs. But um, back in Halifax, how you been keeping? And, uh I guess I'd imagine right now this is sort of a time where you really ramp things up, getting ready for uh, August and uh, the beginning of a very important year for you and your team. Yeah, yeah, no, it's been a good summer so far. I usually take two or three weeks off, um, you know, once things wind down. It's been busy, obviously. I feel like every summer is busy. Once you get to this age, you travel around a little bit and catch up with some of my buddies from school and all those things. But um, yeah, no, we've probably started cranking up here the last two, three weeks and on the ice a little bit more than obviously in the gym and doing our prehab and all those things. So, um, you know, it's been a lot of fun so far, but this is really the time of the year where I think everybody starts getting a little antsy and uh, getting a little bit excited for the season, which is a good feeling. It uh, 
you know, time is flying by. So we're only a few weeks away here and we'll be back in Winnipeg for camp and getting things started. So it's definitely an exciting time. From a strictly like off season holiday vacation perspective, what has been the highlight of your off season so far? Uh, I went to France for about two weeks after the season. So that was a lot of fun. It's part of the world I had never really been to. Um, so yeah, that was probably the highlight. I really enjoyed it over there. Food was good. Food was great. The food is always good over there. <laughs> um, but, but you mentioned that, you know, now it's back to it. You're getting on the ice a bit. You know, here in Winnipeg, a lot of the local guys are here. I mean, Kelowna, it seems like half the National Hockey mm. League is skating. They might need another rink in the summer for the amount of NHL guys. What's the skate like out in Halifax in, uh, in Nova Scotia for uh, you and the NHLers? I mean, now how often you're on the ice and who are you uh, mixing it up with? Yeah, we're, we're really lucky. Um, we have a good group here of guys and kind of different stages of their careers, but obviously there's some pretty famous Nova Scotians who have had a ton of success in the NHL. So um, to have those guys out there and be able to mix it up with them and kind of pick their brains has been awesome. And my brother and I have really just started skating with them the last three, four years. And uh, yeah, it's just a ton of fun to go at the rink. We're usually out there about three times a week now, uh, this time of the summer. And uh, you know, it sets a good pace for us to try to keep up with. So, um, yeah, it's great to be back on the ice and, um, feels like it's a great way. Most of those guys, I'm just chasing or chasing them around, trying to keep up out there. So, um, you know, if you can keep up with the Crosby's and the McKinnon's and the Marshans of the world, it's, uh, you should be in pretty good shape. That is, and that must be wild for you because I mean, you know, you're still a relatively young player and especially someone like Sid, who has been an icon in the game in all of Canada and the world, never mind in your neck of the woods. Um, what do you remember about the first summer skate when you're on the ice going, good Lord, I mean, I'm, I'm going up against 87. Yeah, it was probably the most nervous I've been on the ice in my career. And it's funny because it's uh, usually a June or July skate in the middle of the summer. You wouldn't think there'd be anything to be nervous about. But um, obviously a special player. And I think people grew up, people in my generation or my era definitely grew up looking up to him. Um, you know, especially in this neck of the woods, like everybody grew up idolizing them. So uh, pretty cool to just to be out there rubbing elbows with them. And, um, you know, hopefully we continue to do it. Hey, uh, your brother, uh, Justin, uh, going into the final year as ELC with the Montreal Canadiens. Um, I mean, obviously you've had a chance to play against him. Um, but what, when you guys are going at it in the summer, I mean, everyone that has a brother, especially that's mm -hmm. close to them in age, knows what those battles are like. Uh, how would you characterize uh, going at it with little bro when uh, you guys hit the ice uh, in the off season when you're getting ready for next year? Yeah, they sent us home with the same color jerseys this year. We both have dark blue on, so it's probably good for our sanity around the household. We get to play on the same team instead of against each other. But um, yeah, I really enjoy it. I mean, it's it's just so cool and awesome that I have someone to kind of share the experience with. And I feel like our battles have slowly transitioned to the golf course now. We're playing a lot of golf against each other these days, which can be um equally as stressful and if not more so sometimes so um yeah just grateful i get to share the experience with them we live together here so i, I see them a lot spend a lot of time together uh listen that's uh great i mean obviously you don't see each other a ton during the season so you make the most of uh make the most of the off season uh, mm -hmm. obviously those skates sound uh, a lot of fun listen morgan before we go um i would say most nhlers probably spend quite a bit of time on the golf course but i'd imagine that uh you're going to be spending a lot of time on the golf course because it was announced yesterday after you re-signed that you will be playing in the PGA Tour Canada Fortnite Cup Manitoba Open coming up in mid-August. Uh, tell us how that all came about and uh, how you're feeling about teeing it up with uh, a pretty good field of golfers. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm feeling pretty nervous about it, obviously. I know we're still a few weeks away here, but... I'm working pretty hard to get my game together. Um, been pretty sporadic in terms of how much I've played the last few years, but this summer I've been uh, grinding out in the course quite a bit on weekends and stuff. So, um, yeah, it just came together a few weeks ago. I know Wheels was supposed to play in it, and I'm sure he probably would have fared um, better than I probably will. He's a good golfer, but um, with his move to New York, there was an empty spot, and I think I was probably third or fourth on the alternate list, but the other guys couldn't make it, so I got the call. So... Um, yeah, just trying to scrap my game together now in a few weeks to figure things out and, uh, you know, hopefully go out there and not slow anybody down, not embarrass myself too badly. But I mean, it will be a pretty cool experience. All jokes aside, I know it'll be, uh, something not a lot of people get to experience and, uh, I'm really excited about it.
Yeah, great tournament, great course. Um, you know, it has been, I've been out the last couple of years, especially with one of the Winnipeg Jets participating in it. And, and uh, it's been great. And I think your presence is going to really help the event too. A lot of fans that maybe wouldn't have come out will go out and um, see just uh, how good this tournament is. Just before we go, speaking of golf, uh, I actually am quite envious just thinking about your preparation for this because you happen to live in a part of the world with, frankly, some of the most beautiful golf courses on the planet. Do you uh, you make it around Nova Scotia, taking in some of those uh, those beautiful tracks? Yeah, yeah, we're really lucky. Obviously, um, I think with the two Cabot courses that got built a few years ago, um, that really put us on the map. But there's there's so many great tracks kind of around the around the province that uh, we've been lucky to play. So. Uh, you know, it's been a busy summer. Most of my time has been spent kind of in the Halifax area, but even here, there's some great courses to play. So, um, yeah, they're doing their best to kind of prepare me for what I'm sure will be a, a tough setup there in Manitoba. Well, I, I'm sure most of our listeners and viewers are most hoping that uh, you have an incredible season, but we'll also wish you well and have an incredible tournament and just a great experience as part of that coming up in uh, in August. But, Morgan, Thank you so much for the time. I know people are fired up that you're back for another couple of years. Congratulations on the new deal. Have a great summer, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you back for the golf tournament and then in training camp in September. Thanks, Andrew. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, and I'm looking forward to getting back. All right, Morgan Barron with us on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Great chat with Morgan. And again, that Manitoba Open, the 17th to 20th, out at Southwood, and... Uh, Get out there and see it. It, it I've been for the last couple of years in the, uh, it is a great, great spectator environment. I mean, there's no trees on the course. You can basically walk around. You can see everything from different ways. And uh, I'm sure Morgan will have a nice gallery cheering him on when he tees it up a little later on. All right, Mike McIntyre is coming up. Uh, just before we do that, I have to thank Vita Health Fresh Market for the great support of Winnipeg Sports Talk. You're looking for natural and organic supplements, beauty products, and groceries, all at great prices. Head on down to your local Vita Health Fresh Market. Of course, barbecue season's in full swing. Vita has you stocked up on delicious Vita Market grass-fed bison and beef steaks. You can wash those down with some sober carpenter beer or Zevia sodas. And hey, great time for picnics. A lot of people, you know, you're running around maybe doing day trips. Head up Vita Health Fresh Market for their grab-and-go lunches. They're delivered fresh twice a week. And this month, get a free sap sucker drink with any Vita Market sandwich or wrap. Vita Health Fresh Market, empowering people to lead healthy lives. Seven Winnipeg locations and online with their fully shoppable website at myvita.ca. Wallace and Wallace is busy as they always are through the summer as Winnipeg's fencing and overhead door specialists. If your property needs the security protection of a new fence or if winter did a number on your old one, They've got you covered with vinyl, ornamental, welded wire, chain link, or wood fences. And if you need a new garage door, as the Clopay dealer in Manitoba, they've got Winnipeg's largest selection of overhead garage doors. Just give them a call, 452-2700. The Wallace and Wallace team will arrange a time to come out and give you a free estimate. You can also visit them online at wallacefences.com or wallacedoors.com or pop down to their showroom on Lawson Road off of Keniston. Fellas, how's the closet looking? If you are thinking you need to up your menswear game heading into the next couple months. And of course, fall, get on down to F Apparel. Nothing like it in Winnipeg. Custom suits beginning at 400 bucks, along with chinos, golf pants, custom shirts, both tucked and untucked styles, and an incredible selection of menswear accessories. If you're in a wedding party or planning on having one, talk to the fellas about uh, getting your suits at F. 15% discount for everybody in the wedding party when you get your suits there and uh, you won't have to return them on monday after the big day uh, and of course they've got uh, they've got it all pop down and see them if you'd like more information online go to f apparel.com that's eph apparel.com and you can also book an appointment there to pop down and see them and get suited up they are of course down at 190 smith street and uh hey with summer in full swing always a great time to pop down and grab one of those new summer blizzard flavors at the nick and nicky dq Four locations, the DQ Northgate, DQ Polo Park, DQ St. Anne's, and DQ Niverville. And, of course, hit them up on Instagram at DQ Manitoba. Fire a picture if you want to get a custom-made DQ ice cream cake or blizzard cake 
for your next event. All right, let's get Mike McIntyre in here. Fresh off a nice chat with Morgan Barron. Mike, what's going on? How are you? I'm doing really well, Huss. Uh, how are you this fine but frigid Tuesday? What happened to summer? Who turned the heat off? What's going on? You know what? It was so, I mean, we had three days of spring. And then summer began. And uh, I mean, sooner or later, I, actually, apparently, we could get some gnarly storms just a little bit to the west of us this afternoon. Yeah. I, all, all the storm chasers that I follow on Twitter are all <laughs> horny for this afternoon. They're, they're, they're engaging in uh, southwest Manitoba, and we'll see what happens going forward. I, for my part, am a hell of a lot better than I was last week. I was as sick as I've been in a long, long time. And uh, I'm just sort of getting over it. Uh, but yeah, no, looking forward to it. And of course, we've got a big football game on, on Thursday to get to with the Elks coming to town yeah. with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and, and much more. Uh, listen, we'll talk CFL and a couple other local stories in a minute. But uh, we just had Morgan Barron on. I don't know if there was a lot of suspense about this deal. I mean, it certainly seems pretty fair on both sides. Uh, you know, when you're talking about coming out of these ELCs, it's pretty clear to both sides, I think, where these numbers are going to end up. I don't think there was really right. any danger of getting to arbitration. But what's interesting with Morgan Barron is that I think while we look, and Remus and I did this at the start before we got zapped out by a power outage, um, I think there's a chance that Morgan Barron could actually play more this year, but potentially might not even be on the third line. I mean, the loss of Dubois and the ads of Ayafalo and Velarde and Kapari, assuming that he's in the lineup, I think certainly give Rick Bonus some more options as to how this lineup will look, but also maybe getting closer to sort of a Vegas blueprint where no worries about putting that fourth line out and playing them more than they have in the past. Yeah, especially with, you know, Vlad Nemestikov re-signing as well. The, there are a lot of options for sure. And when you kind of, you know, do your fantasy lineup projections of what the Jets might look like, there are scenarios where Morgan Barron's actually on the fourth line. And I wouldn't view that as a demotion at all. First of all, we know that Rick Bonus loves the player. Um, it, it's funny, Huss. I, I think I've told this story before. Or it's It's out there. But... Uh, Morgan Barron was one of the very first players, if not the first player that Rick Bonus connected with after he took the Jets job. Part of that was because of, uh, of the fact that him and Morgan Barron both spend the summer out in Nova Scotia uh, in the Halifax area. And they actually hit the links together last summer and had a good chat. And we certainly saw Rick Bonus come to trust Morgan Barron. And the, <clears throat> the result was, you know, a career best season for the young man. Um, obviously using him in, in a primarily checking line role, but also some offense that was there um, that Morgan Barron himself, as he mentioned, uh, you know, believes there's even more to come, more to offer. But yeah, it just speaks to the depth now that the Jets have at the forward position. Yes, they've lost Dubois. Yes, they've lost Wheeler. But when you look at what they've added since the start of last season, you know, Velarde, Ayafalo, Kapari, Niederreiter, Nemesnikov, uh, there's a lot of options at the disposal for Rick Bonus. And so, yeah, whether it's on the third line or the fourth line, I dare say Rick Bonus has got to be pretty excited about the ability to roll all four lines and not feel like, you know, there's a mismatch uh, um, depending on, you know, who, who they happen to be out there against, whether they're at home or on the road. Uh, and so, yeah, I think it's uh, it's a great situation for the Jets, and it's a very good deal for Morgan Barron, you know, to to have now two years to see what the ceiling might be for this young man who's very much still just kind of coming into his own. You know, Alex, up on the screen, for those of you watching with us on YouTube, hit that red subscribe button, by the way, everyone. Great to have you with us. Um you know, we've got three in that. If you look at that second line, and again, this is assuming that Shifley's still here. We'll get to that in a minute with Connor and Ehlers on that top line. Nemetsnikov, Perfetti, Velarde all have played center in the past and are capable right. of playing center. I rock, think paper, scissor is... to see who gets to take... <laughs> rock, paper, scissor to see who takes the face off. <laughs> well, you know... 
Nemetsnikov, like I love the signing and I love what he did for Winnipeg because he was such a versatile player. You can play all the positions. You can play up and down the lineup. We're going to see about Gabriel Velarde, whether he does kind of grow into a center position and becomes a top six center for the Winnipeg Jets. What do you make a Cole Perfetti situation coming in here? Because I know when they drafted him, they thought that he would project to be a center. I think that there's some benefits to him, maybe with the wear and tear on his body from the corners that might benefit from the center yeah. position. But I think there are still questions as to whether he can do it, particularly in his own end with the defensive responsibility that comes with the center. What do you make of the challenges to Perfetti and the opportunity at the same time that is going to be presented to him, whether or not Mark Scheifele is traded before training camp? Well, I think Cole Perfetti is going to be given every chance to uh, to play center uh, starting in camp. And, you know, I think, Huss, we heard from uh, Kevin Cheveldayoff, the GM uh, around free agency, and um, he was asked a little bit about Cole Perfetti. Obviously, the injury history, Perfetti's now had, uh, I believe it's three injuries. He had two last season uh, and one the season before. And there's a concern there. And it was interesting to hear Kevin Cheveldayoff talk about Cole Perfetti has completely changed his training this summer with the idea of maybe what he had been doing um, made him a little more susceptible to getting hurt. I think we also remember, Huss, go back to to training camp last year and those preseason games. uh, Who can forget Rick Bonus, you know, brand new on the scene, kind of suggesting that Cole Perfetti was to blame for putting himself in vulnerable positions. Uh, I think it was uh, Zadarov who who caught him a couple times in that game against the Flames, the, the second last preseason game. And, you know, with sort of a dangerous blindside hit that the coach suggested Perfetti has to be better at protecting himself. And I think we saw some some improvements there as the season went along. Unfortunately, he did sustained two injuries, one of which was going hard to the net, if you recall, where him and Jake DeBrusque of the Boston Bruins kind of went shoulder to shoulder. Uh, But so he's apparently changed his training routine. And based on what the GM had to say, it sounds like they very much want to give Cole Perfetti a chance to, to see if he can play in his, you know, preferred chosen position of center at the NHL level. So how quick of a hook will they have? You know, does he get all of training camp and maybe that starts the season there? Um, That'll sort itself out. But I do expect Cole Perfetti is going to get some time up the middle. Uh, And as you say, that's probably happening regardless of whether Mark Scheifele is is on the active roster or not when, uh, when the season begins. Well, speaking of that, Mike, I mean, it's our weekly check-in on, uh, <laughs> and I mean, I know there hasn't been much reporting. Most of the insiders are have their phones off uh, out, but, um, you know, as we sit here in the middle of July, let me take your temperature on, on both Shifley and Hellebuck uh, and their uh, their future as of the middle of July with the Winnipeg Jets in your mind. Well, I would suggest that the uh, the rumor mill and discussion surrounding those two players is as chilly right now as the weather outside. Uh, maybe like summer, it heats up as we go along here, or at least we hope summer heats up. I see the forecast looks pretty promising for this weekend. Uh, finally get back close to the 30s again. But whether trade talks heat up as we get a little closer, I mean, You know, I I did a little digging the other day just around where teams are at right now with the salary cap, Huss. I think there's more teams right now that have to subtract from their roster than have the ability to add in the sense that there's a lot of teams right now, you know, when you account for RFAs that still have to be signed um, that are over the salary cap and you're allowed to go over the cap in the summer up to 10%, in fact. Uh, but there's teams that are going to have to do some slashing and burning here uh, before the start of the season. And I think that's part of what's going on is there's just not a lot of teams right now that that are in in uh, in buy mode. Teams are thinking more about selling at this point or or how they're going to get under the, the number. And of course, some of that ends up working itself out in training camp. You inevitably will get injuries that that help the cause, if you will. And maybe save a player from going on waivers that otherwise was going to go that route. 
There's also the additional buyout window that some teams are now going to have because of arbitration. Toronto Maple Leafs, for example, uh, there's a lot of speculation about Matt Murray and whether they're because of Samsonov's arbitration, if that door will now be used. Uh, but so I just think that that explains why everybody's taking a big collective uh, breath around the NHL. We're still, what, uh, three months away from opening night or just under three months. So it may heat back up, but I think at this point, um, first of all, there is nothing new to report. And second of all, I don't expect that to change anytime soon. Although, as I joked the other day, uh, I am going on a two-week holiday here coming up. And so um, you can perhaps bank on something happening That's what it's while happening. I'm away, given given my history. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you'll, just, <laughs> you'll just be getting on, literally turning the phone off as the plane takes right. off. As it It'll blows, be a massive, the, the massive blows. deal that'll <laughs> dominate all of our conversations for the entire yeah. two weeks when you're gone. Um, I'm sort of with you. I mean, to me, the one really intriguing and interesting team is the Boston Bruins for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. I mean, they potentially could be with a Bergeron and Krejci. That will open up cap space. That will also have a huge need for them. And I think there's some players that are of interest to uh, uh, to Winnipeg on that Boston club. Um, if it doesn't happen, it'll be very interesting to see how things work with Shifley and head coach Rick Bonus, considering the way things went sour at the end of last season. But Mike, uh, Gabriel Velarde is going to get a deal at some point before this arbitration. I think we can all agree there's no chance that that goes to a hearing, having not even played a game here for the Winnipeg Jets. And most likely, I do. Do you agree? I mean, are you expecting a two-year deal for Velarde? Yeah, I, I'm not expecting a seven or eight year deal at this point. Uh, I think both team and player would prefer it be shorter. Um, you know, first of all, Gabe Velarde's got to see how he equips in this organization. And I mean, he he he's coming off obviously a very good had some injury history. So if you're the Jets, you probably want to wait and see what he can do uh, before you commit you know, maybe a big number and big terms. So yeah, I, I'm expecting something in the two, maybe three year range. And then there's that added um, uh, issue that the cap, you know, is is very likely going up and going up significantly. So if you're a young player, um, I know obviously Pierre-Luc Dubois committed to a, a number and a, a long term, but I think a lot of players are taking a wait and see approach and their agents are probably advising them to do that. Um, because, you know, if they can put together another strong season here coming up, uh, it will probably be to their benefit because uh, GMs are going to have a lot more money to play with here in the in the short term. Well, that is true. But at the same time, the competition for those dollars on the free agent market oh, is sure. going to be night and day next year as opposed to what it was this season. And again, there obviously there's the potential of some big time extensions. But until those happen... Um, you know, there are there are big, big names that'll be in line for big, big raises. Um, and that's why I think about Shifley. I mean, if there was a team that was bringing him on that gave him a five-year offer, a six-year offer, that would basically take him, you know, through what I guess he'll be 31 when he begins his next deal. Um, that might make sense for him, especially going in. I mean, it, betting on yourself is great if you win the bet. Um, But I mean, just ask John Klingberg how it worked out turning down that eight year deal with the Dallas stars right now. And he went one year for seven. Now he's one year for four. There, there is some risk involved. And I'll tell you what, that free agent class has the potential of, you know, with all due respect to Shifley with the numbers that he's put up, which have been, I mean, excellent throughout his entire career at 31 years old. Um, you know, he may have to wait for a number of younger, bigger name players to go off the board before he's there. So I'm fascinated sure. about all of that. It's interesting, Huss. I mean, we we spend a lot of time obviously talking about Mark Shifley and Connor Hellebuck being UFAs in a year and what's going to happen with them. The Jets have a number of other players in that camp that we don't really talk about. Nino Niederreiter, who I had a great conversation with last week, uh, caught up to him over the phone uh, in, that was in Switzerland. Awesome piece and piece of the free press. Yeah, thanks. And, you know, it was it was quite something to hear. I, I said to him, how come no one talks about, why, is, why isn't there any hand-wringing going on about, 
you know, what's going to happen with Nino Niederreiter? Either they got to extend him or trade him. They can't risk losing him for nothing. And he kind of self-deprecating said, well, I'm not nearly the player that, that Hellebuck and Shifley are. And, and, you know, a really, really good attitude. He said, I got to go out this year and earn a contract. I hope it's with the Jets. Um, but I got to prove at 31 that I'm still uh, a valuable NHL player, which I think is music to the ears of the Jets. But so you've got Niederreiter, who's making $4 million and would come off the books if not resigned. Brendan Dillon, $3.9 million. He only has one year left. And Dylan DeMello uh, at $3 million. Add it all up between Shifley, Hellebuck, and Lauren Brassois was also just signed for a year. The Jets have six pending UFAs on their roster right now, including both goaltenders. And by my math, Huss, that's about $24 million uh, that those six players will be making this coming season that that could potentially clear if if all those guys aren't re-signed. But um, so in addition to the cap going up, if you're the Jets, um, you also could have a ton of money to play with depending on whether you trade those players and what you potentially get back. Uh, but that being said, um, you know, it, it creates a lot of uncertainty right now. And so going back to the Velarde equation, I think the money would absolutely be there for the Jets. And if they like what they see, there's no question they're going to want to lock him up long term. Um, but I think a wait and see approach is probably the best approach and therefore a, a short term deal. And, and I don't expect it to get to arbitration. I mean, I think we're seeing, Huss, there was like 22 arbitration cases or something like that this summer. There's already been like almost half of them have settled before the dates. Like usually every summer, very few, sometimes if any, actually get to the arbitration stage. Uh, and so I suspect there'll be a resolution. I think it's the 28th on Velarde. So they got 10 more days. Yeah. And I suspect we'll we'll get some news on that in the, in the not too distant the, the future. Guys Dude, the guy's the centerpiece of a massive trade coming back here, starting yeah. off with a new team. His first interaction with the Jets is not going to be in an NHLPA courtroom pleading <laughs> why he deserves his yeah. money going back and forth. I mean, as I say, I've used this term before, but it is inconceivable that it gets to that point. And I imagine we'll get resolution probably at some point in the next week. Where What I'm not sure about is guys that don't have arbitration. And... uh what do you make of Logan Stanley's position right now? We talked about this a little bit yesterday on the show. I'm, uh, I mean, you know, Morrissey, Schmidt, Pionk, Demello, Dylan Sandberg. There's basically your top six right now. You've got Capo Bianco, who is signed for this year, and Declan they didn't Chisholm's want to wave. no longer. Right. Yeah. They, did, Declan they didn't Chisholm's want to wave. No longer waiver, waivers exempt. Yeah. Um, Billy Hanela can go back. He might be in the mix. Where does this leave Logan Stanley right now who doesn't have a contract? Yeah, and, and the other thing you haven't mentioned yet is how word came out last late last season that through his agent, Logan Stanley had apparently requested a change of scenery, um, you know, feeling that he maybe wasn't going to get the opportunity here that, that he had hoped for. Uh, and I don't imagine that's changed as he surveys the the blue line landscape right now with the Jets. No, they haven't made any ads in free agency, but there's been no deletions either. Um, I guess unless you count Leon Gavonke being traded, um, you know, for a, 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 a young prospect who's going to start with the Moose. But mm -hmm. so, you know, the, there just doesn't seem to be a clear path there. I also think, though, that if you're the Jets, you don't want to risk you know waving logan stanley uh and trying to send him down because chances are a team would pick him up on waivers and then you get nothing for him but you know can we conclude as we sit here on july 18th Huss, that the jets have maybe tried to see if they could get something for logan stanley if there'd be a team you know whether it was at the draft whether it was um added to the the Pierre-Luc Dubois trade or something and that there just does not seem to be much of a market. I mean, if you're the Jets, would you have taken a late round draft pick at the draft last month in Nashville for Logan Stanley? I don't see why not. If he's not a guy that you have penciled in in your top six or even your top seven um, and there's other young guys that are you know knocking on the door, it seems to me you might be at the point of 
trying to get what you can for him. Uh, but it doesn't seem, you know, obviously whatever's been offered, if anything, at this point has not been to the Jets' liking. There's still time, of course, between now and the start of the season. And again, there's always that issue of injuries. Uh, but if everybody is healthy, I just don't see how Logan Stanley is anywhere near the top six and possibly not the top seven or even top eight when the season begins. Um, because, you know, I, I think Declan Chisholm, one way or the other, is probably on the roster to start opening night, whether it's as a seventh or an eighth defenseman. And Kyle Capobianco was a guy, Huss, who they didn't want to waive all last year. He didn't play very much, but he was the perfect guy for that role. A great practice player, a great teammate, someone they really liked having around. And when they would throw him in the lineup every now and then, he was pretty good. Um, so does that change this year? Maybe not. So if you're looking at that, if you've got Capo Bianco now and Chisholm, who's essentially taking Logan Stanley's spot, poor Billy Hanela is perhaps the odd man out again uh, for one more season. Uh, but yeah, Logan Stanley is the big question mark. And, you know, he's, as you say, he's not going to arbitration, but he is an RFA. I think based on his injury history and what he's done so far like I don't think we're I don't imagine they're at a stalemate over a number um, because it's not like he has a whole lot of leverage here especially not going to arbitration to demand a king's ransom so you know I, I assume that it, a deal gets worked out sooner or later it's just whether or not that's ultimately the Jets that are paying his salary whatever it happens to be uh, I, I'm not so sure about that yeah, I mean, listen, if he does come to camp and he's the victim of a numbers game, the one thing I am quite sure, just because he was a first-rounder, because he's 6'7", I mean, there will be a team that will take a, a chance sure. on a Logan Stanley for nothing on the waiver wire. So I think they do need to figure out something on one way or the other. Hey, before we go, and I know we've been spending a lot of time talking about this Jets offseason, uh, <clears throat> what did you make of what happened on Saturday in Ottawa with the Bombers? So I've got a I've got a fun perspective for you, Huss, uh, because I was at a family wedding on Saturday, actually out in Gimli, Manitoba. It was a beautiful beach wedding and uh, the reception uh, at the Lakeside uh, Hotel there in the in the banquet room. So there's a lot of bomber fans. This is a big family wedding, a couple hundred people there. A lot of bomber fans, you know, at the wedding. And there was a bit of a lull between the ceremony and kind of cocktails and dinner and and the, and and whatnot. So a lot of folks were actually in the uh, the lounge watching the game on TV, and they watched as the bombers, of course, built a commanding lead. And then um, then everybody had to gather uh, for the dinner and the start of the speeches and all that as things were unraveling. And so. <laughs> I was kind of just following along on my phone, of course, as I imagine a lot of other guests. And you could you could hear the collective groans uh, at the wedding. It actually sullied, <laughs> briefly sullied the event, put people in a bad mood. Bomber fans at this festive celebration as the bombers imploded. Uh, and so it was kind of funny to see it from that perspective. Uh, not so funny, of course, for the fans and uh, the organization. But yeah, my goodness, um, you know, the Bombers are still, look, they're still a very good team. They still have great players. If anything, perhaps a loss like this is just a great big serving of humble pie that reminds them they can't take anything or anyone for granted. And maybe ultimately they're stronger for it. But kind of short term it's hard to take any positives away from that and uh you know one would expect them to come out and absolutely pulverize the elks this week uh, but if they struggle at all against the elks uh, no question there's going to be um some further heart palpitations in the forecast for fans well, that being said, uh, they're 15 and a half point favorites. They're going to be angry and pissed off because of what happened. Kenny Lawler is coming back. Yeah. <laughs> and the mess that is the Edmonton Elks are the uh, the team. And I, I, I'd i say normally this short week isn't a great thing to have happen. I think for the Bombers, the short week is exactly what they were hoping for. Come out, beat the living daylights out of this team, get all your anger out, get a big win. 
go have a great bye week and then get back for an extended week of practice, which they will need before yes. they host the British Columbia Lions, considering the whooping that the BC Lions put on Winnipeg earlier this season for their other of their two losses this year. Mike, enjoy a little bit of time off, and uh, we'll uh, catch you next week before you uh, hit the high seas. Set seas. sail. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> one more week. Uh, I'm still on. I'm still on dry land next week, even though I'm on holidays. And then the week after might be tough to get reception in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, so we might have to skip that week. But yes, we'll be back next week for our weekly check-in on the Shifley Hellebuck situation and much more, I imagine. Beauty, dude. Thanks for doing this. Great to have you on the show as always. All right, there's Mike McIntyre of the Winnipeg Free Press. Speaking of that game on Thursday, 7.30 start. And you know what that means? The party gets going in the Princess Auto tailgate zone at 5.30 p.m. just outside IG Field. 350 hot dogs, 350 pop, $5 beers, DJ finesse spitting. It is absolutely the place to go before all Winnipeg Blue Bomber games. We'll see you there and make sure to pop by the Princess Auto booth while you're there. They've always got some neat little trinkets there uh, handing out. Of course, Princess Auto is where you'll find the best deals and the most unique assortment of tools and equipment around. Everything you need to complete the projects on your list or start something new is at Princess Auto. Two Winnipeg locations, Panit Road and Portage Avenue West. You can always shop online 24-7, 365 at princessauto.com. Looking forward to seeing uh, Joe and some of the fellas from Consolidated Supply at the game like I did the last couple. But other than that, they are busy right now because they are Manitoba's leaders in irrigation systems, artificial turf, and new and used golf carts, not to mention other great options for your property, including hot tubs and amazing outdoor kitchen options. And they're the leaders in small engine parts and repair. So many different things Consolidated Supply can help you with. Get on down and see them in person. Their showroom's open to the public at 1395 Niagara Road East or find out more online at cte.ca. And uh, hey, our friends at Royal Sports are busy right now as well throughout the summer. And hey, with that game on Thursday, it's the white game, not the blue game. Bombers are going to be wearing the whites. Maybe you want to change up your bomber gear. Well, if you want to do that, there's no better place to pop in than Royal Sports. Tons of exclusives that you won't find anywhere else, along with uh, thousands of pieces of Winnipeg Jets merchandise. And hey, you want to get a new 9 or a new 13 jersey? Alex Laia follower Gabriel Velarde heading into the season. Royal can help you out with that as well. Not to mention new NFL gear coming in. Tons of international soccer. And of course, Canada's in the World Cup. The women start on Thursday. Huge selection of Canada soccer gear as well. It's all down there at Royal Sports, along with soccer, baseball, softball, tennis, disc golf, and a huge selection of bikes. And, of course, they are Winnipeg's number one hockey superstore. 750 Pemina Highway. Give them a follow on Instagram, at Royal Sports Pemina, for the latest merchandise drops and sale information. Just before we bring in Feinberg, if you're looking for a great place to watch the Jays tonight, the Bombers on Thursday, or maybe even some of the Open Championship in the day. Get on down to your local Boston Pizza ice-cold schooners, world-famous BP Wings, gourmet pizzas, and the latest from the BP feature menu, including the Korean barbecue chicken sandwich and the beef antojitos, which I tried a couple days ago and were wonderful. Uh, It's all there at BP, and hey, if you're staying home, you can always order online at bostonpizza.com. All right, one final major for the world of golf, it's at Hoy Lake, the, the Open Championship, 151, gets going early on Thursday. And, of course, NFL's right around the corner. And who better to chop it up with than my guy, Jeff Feinberg, who joins us now. Feinberg, what is up, buddy? How are you? How's your summer going? Uh, summer's good. No complaints, Huss. Uh, took a bath on, you... that, on that bomber game last week. Like, I think a well, lot of listen. your listeners... I don't want to get into it. Into the, third, like, into the fourth quarter. No, I just the blame comeback. the pick six. They only had time for the comeback if you give them the pick six. Like, you could have just sure. taken a sack, run for a yard, <laughs> do nothing, and do not just punt it deep and set. Like, yeah, I don't know. They could have done that twice in the two minutes, but one time, yeah, they figured it out. 
I, I, even with the pick six, I couldn't believe that it happened. I'm like, okay, just get this. Just don't let them have the two pointer. We've still covering the nine and a half. It's all good. And then it wasn't. And uh, yeah, it needs to say it's given us lots to talk about this week. Uh, when you started so hot, I mean, as the official unofficial host of the RBC Canadian Open, it's uh, you set the bar so high. I imagine it's sort of a bit of a lull right now, but it's always a big week when we've got a major. And uh, this one is shaping up to be a real interesting one. I know Pat... Uh, Pat Mayo, of course, over at Mayo Media Network, did a great research show talking about the ins and outs of the golf course coming in. You guys did your picks. But just before we get into talking about the players that are taking on, what do uh, casual fans need to know about the venue for this Open Championship and the challenges that the World Best are going to be facing when they tee off on Thursday? Yeah, well, we haven't been to Royal Liverpool since uh, 2014, Hustler, when Rory won and when we were there in twenty uh, in two thousand six, Tiger won. So it feels like there's a bit of a trend, I guess, in you know pointing into the direction of really good players. I would say what what's probably the most defining feature right now would be um, that out of bounds lurks uh, pretty close to the fairway on about six or seven holes here, Hustler. And between that and the is the eighteenth leader- hole just does the eighteenth hole like it's like two feet to the right of the fairway like did i see that right it looks like yeah it's about uh an unlucky bounce away from being out of bounds and if my understanding is correct only like any part of the ball touching that white line your ball is deemed out of bounds so it's even like yeah yeah any part of your ball touches that line it is out of bounds um i guess it's almost like thinking about the line to gain in, in in football so to say so that'll be a scary observation and i think we will see some really good players have some pretty large numbers while at the same time have some pretty good players be able to take advantage of of this course and, and plot their way around it quite nice tiger hit one driver for the week rory you know mentioned he hit a lot of two irons and and a bit of driver it, they've made it harder since 2014 they've they've uh you know they've changed the par by one so they're trying to make it quite a bit harder the course correlation that might sound silly that a lot of people keep coming back to though hustler is sawgrass players championship um for a couple reasons one the litter board is the the past litter board leaderboards have been littered with players who have had their greatest or some of their great career successes there between Rory and Tiger and and Fowler's won there, Sergio's won there, Adam Scott's won there, Jim Furyk has always sort of um, contended there. So that has sort of been a, you know, a point. You'd be like, Sawgrass, like, how does that make any sense? We're in Florida. Well, you consider if you take all these out of bounds and just consider them bodies of water, like lurk everywhere at Sawgrass, it's like, okay, well, yeah, there's landmines everywhere. And I guess that could sort of be the defining feature. St. Andrews last year, Camp Smith, wide left, wide right, didn't really matter. Here, you're going to be making double or triple uh, based on those sorts of situations. You know, um, is it safe to say that uh, you don't need to be a bomber, like top 10 and driving distance. What's way more important is knowing where the ball's going when it comes off your tee ball. Yeah. I mean, that is safe to say because in many ways driver could be out of the bag, but if the wind is down um, and if these guys who they hit it so far, Huss, if they feel like they can take on these pop bonkers, then I think we will see a few guys go after it. That being said, driving accuracy appears to probably be the most important feature. So you want guys that hit it long and straight as an arrow, as if that's not a um, a, a, a if that's not a way to go about winning golf tournaments pretty much every week. You know, I'm looking at the odds right now, and I've been paying attention the last couple of days. There's been a few <laughs> moves, you know, here and there. But I can't remember a board like this in a long time. Rory's the favorite at eight to one. Scotty Scheffler's plus eight twenty-five. John Rahm is fourteen. 
Those are the only three players, Jeff, under 20 to one for the open championship. When you think about all the talent that shows up for a major, um, it's been a while since there's only been three clear guys and then everyone else at 20 or higher. Yeah. So what's interesting, Huss, is not only are there, I guess, many, as I've mentioned, a few lines that kind of can point to the players' championship at Sawgrass. I would say Sawgrass gives us a, a betting board that looks like this almost every year. We're like, whoa, I'm getting all – because it's got this bit of a wild card element. Great players can implode there uh, all the time. We do see it. And at the same time, I feel like the books are, like, baiting us with everybody. It's an odds board full of sucker bets. Like, just to start from the back to the front. I saw Hideki Matsuyama's at 100-1. to 1. And we can get into what's working against Hideki, including being Ander cursed this week, but he's off of a big, uh, you know, win at the U S open, but you know, Tony Finau 70 to one to me, like the board is as just if we're littered. not betting that <laughs> to me, the board is just littered with suckers bets. I'm not betting Scotty Scheffler because I would just accept him winning and not having to put my full clip on him than tilting the putts that he would miss. But it does kind of feel like his to lose, Huss. Um, golf, we know it to be a cruel game. But it like that would go above and beyond if Scotty Scheffler were to finish this season without a major championship, a season in which he has struck the ball better than Tiger Woods tee to green. Tiger Woods at his prime was not hitting the ball as good as Scotty Scheffler is. And there's not a big difference there. And the biggest difference is Scott, Tiger Woods was a great putter, was a clutch putter. Uh, but as Scotty Scheffler, he doesn't even need to be in the a, a median putter this week. He doesn't need to be in the top 50%. He just needs to not be in the bottom 25%. And he probably wins. The problem is, Huss, he is in that bottom 20% pretty much every week. And it does, and he still, and he loses these events by one or two strokes. It is incredible. Yeah, what is he? Seven straight top fives. Yeah. I mean, on the lock shop, we just go. I would bad. argue Scotty Scheffler T five. The no, his his T to green rankings in every event. I don't think he's lost to more than seventy players this year, like total. In every tournament, like it's hard to quantify. I made a comment the other day that him not winning a major this year will, for me, probably be the biggest story of the major season. Once we sort of like have fully completed a season and his stats will be historically quantifiable um, in those sorts of ways. What about Rory? I mean, listen, just for the narrative, he's been through a lot. He's been sort of a whipping boy uh, while still being incredibly rich and successful and all that. Um, I mean, he's eight to one. He just won the Scottish Open. Birdie on 17, birdie on 18. He seems to be in a good place. Can Rory end his major drought and get it done? Yeah, absolutely. And it's great that he saw the ball go in the hole to win the tournament before to be clutch. You and me and often guys that like to bet golf regularly – Everyone I knew with a Bobby Mack ticket future for this week were so sad that they thought he was going to win last week because Bobby Mack ain't going back to back. And I do believe that. But when we talk about the players at the very top of the tour of the odds board, to me, winning the week before is actually like rocket fuel. It's not like, oh, wins are finite for certain players. They can't like piggyback them. You know, wins are so hard. How are they going to do it again? When players at the top win, to me, it's like it's like gasoline on their ability to win a big event. Rory feels like he's in. He's there almost every tournament. He's won here before. It, it would be nice that just. I can't believe we still talk about him in all this time since that PGA Championship at Valhalla. It's an unbelievable that we're still here. He hasn't won a major. But we are easy to root for. I'm just not paying the price. Um, why do you think John Rahm is? He's in this no man's land in between eight to one for Scheffler and for McElroy, 
and then 20 and above for Smith and uh, the rest of that crew. <laughs> I mean, is or, or is Rom in a situation where he we think he's as good as those two guys at the top, but he just hasn't been as good of lately? Is it something about the course? What do you make of John? Yeah, it's simply, uh, what have you done for me lately in this very um, cynical betting space? He didn't play the Scottish Open last week, although there were sites he was cited all around, you know, preparing it at, uh, you know, getting himself set for this tournament. He's really struggled since winning the Masters for for his standard. Uh, you know, even like statistically, it's not like he's not winning, but statistically playing outstanding, like say Scotty Scheffler. Uh, and we saw it happen last year with Scheffler Huss won the Masters and kind of went into a bit of a lull. He should be fine. Reports just as we're coming on, he signed a brand new deal with Callaway that gives him an equity stake in the company that includes a, a Top Golf. So, you know, he should be, uh, as this morning, he's saying he doesn't even need a payback for not going to live. He made that decision like a big boy. He'll live with the consequences. Little did we know, like, that he's getting the piper for the bag, as he deserves. I love John Rahm. Uh, I'm a huge fan I get why they've sort of made him in no man's land. I would say to piggyback on that, though, I'm not betting it. But Brooks Kepka at 20, 22 to 1 should probably be closer to John Rom. The fact that you can get Brooks Kepka with a two in front of it at a major um, is still seems kind of ridiculous to me, although I'm not running to bet it. And when he wins, I'll be so upset. And the people that do bet it will look at us like, easy game, you fools. It's the easiest game on earth. You talk about how well, hard I mean, I'm looking at picking winners is. <laughs> I'm looking at the cool bet board right here, and he's at 22, along with your guy, Vic Hovland, and everybody's favorite, Ricky Fowler. We were talking on Lock Shop today. Could you imagine at the beginning of this season if I told you that Ricky Fowler would be fifth in odds for the British Open by the end of this season? That you would not have seemed possible. Any of these players. I, I mean, we're, what we thought of Brooks Kepka at Christmas. Like, you could have told me him and Ricky would be the same odds at a major, but like, okay, maybe they're like 80 or 100. If you'd have told me Ricky Fowler and Victor Hovland in the middle of July are the same odds to win a major, I'd have thought Victor died. <laughs> like, that's, you know, and that's not a shot at Ricky. And I got a friend or two that have 125 to 1 Ricky tickets that, like, oh, my God. And they made that, like, like – just like the fact that he was a top five here last time, like maybe if he gets life, this could be a good. No one thought we were coming here for this. I spent 2015, probably 2014 through 2019 hustler. That's five years, four majors a year, 20 majors betting Vicky Fowler at this number and putting my hand in my pocket at the end of the tournament and feeling nothing but, yeah, we don't want to say it. It just wasn't there. Ricky, I, if he wins, I'll melt. Melt in terms of crying. I'm just not betting it. You could have bet him to win in Detroit a month ago at like 20, 18 to 1. It's the same with Fleetwood. I bet Tommy Fleetwood in Canada, Hustler, at 28 to 1 to win the Canadian Open. Now I have to pay that or shorter. Maybe there's some 30s that have appeared to win the, the, the Open Championship. I, I love Tommy Fleetwood. I just I'll let with him and Ricky, I'll just have to melt with happiness. But I can't, I'm not winning money if they win, clearly. Let me ask you this. I mean, you had hit a bunch of the guys basically that are in the 20s. Xander at a major at 30. That's a number we haven't seen in a while. Um, Lowry, Morikawa, 33, 35, DJ 35, Speeth, and then all the way to 50. For guys like Matty Fitz, Fino, Rose, and 60s and 65s for like Kim and Burns and uh, Wyndham Clark, Tim's guy, Homa, DeShambo, Minwoo Lee, Justin Thomas, Cam Young. Uh, I, if you're putting a couple sprinkles on the on the on, on out of that group, uh, or picking a couple guys to be kind of mid-range players for your DraftKings guys, I mean, I know we're talking outrights here, but. Who do you think has a chance to win would have the best chance? And who do you like to have the best week? Okay, so yeah, you named a lot of guys that I'm right around. And like you said, this could be Sucker Zone. This could be the candy store. And we're just suckers. Well, guess what? My backpack's full of lollipops, Huss. Like, consider <laughs> me a sucker. Consider me a sucker. Uh, that Xander at 30, I get people make fun with bet this guy at you know, 18 or 20 to one. There's a, there's a three in front of Xander. 
you know, the guy has won a Scottish Open. He's been right there at the end of Open Championships. I'm so silly. I like to bet on guys that haven't won majors. I don't believe they can't win them. I believe Xander can. That's something I'm interested. Dustin Johnson, to me, uh, seems like he could be an excellent pick this week. But as you keep going back up this board, Sam Burns made a triple bogey on Saturday at the Scottish last week, causing a weird bunker situation that can happen to anybody this week. And the variance of just getting a bad bounce in the bunker and being there forever. He drives the ball straight. He's an excellent putter. That's someone I'm looking to make money on. Adam Scott, straight, straight driver of the ball. The putter is improving. Uh, these are these are guys all through this range that I am looking to make money on. And our boy Corey Connors, like call me a sucker again. I pulled 100 to 1 yesterday morning. The guy's straight as an arrow. He will put himself in position. Pat Mayo called him the banana stand if you're a fan of a arrested development. There's always money in Corey Connors. He might not win the tournament, but to me, there's always money in a guy like Corey Connors who's won twice in Texas. And that might sound like ridiculous as a muck, muck, Valero, Texas Open, but just the openness, the windy conditions, like that's what you deal with when you're winning in San Antonio. I think Corey Connors, like many big tournaments, like Sawgrass, going to be showing up this week, Huss. You know, and I think, you know, in and around, I mean, all those guys that we just talked about, I think there's value in, like, jumping on some top tens, you know, at plus 350, yes. at four to one for a bunch of those guys. And you know what? It, it might be Rory or Scotty that, you know, wins by two or three, um, but the rest of that field is going to be rounded out by uh, real top players. Jeff Feinberg is with us. You can give him a follow on Twitter at gfeinberg17 if you want a real good laugh. Check out Mayo Media Network for uh, the picks, along with uh, Tim Anderson, the big game hunter, the man who gave out Wyndham Clark as his gold pick. And we probably will never hear the end of it, but, you know, good for Tim for actually make, making that happen. Really enjoyed Monday's show. Just while I've got you here, uh, and I know we're going to be all focused in on golf, this is the part of the year where... Everyone starts talking about a little fantasy football. We look ahead to NFL training camps. Um, it, it is fascinating right now seeing what is happening with the running back market in the National Football League. And, and, and listen, this legitimately is a problem. It might be the most uh, thankless job in the National Football League. I mean, as far as how often you're getting hit, the damage it does to players. And the way things are set up with the CBA – these guys really are screwed. Um, we're seeing franchise tags being put out on guys like Saquon Barkley right now. Your guy, Eckler, wanted a trade, wanted a contract. It just hasn't been there. Um, give me your perspective on the, the issues right now in the NFL with the running back position and guys that certainly deserve to be probably getting a lot more money earlier in their career. And then the fact that when they come up out of their, out of their rookie deals, they're up Shit's Creek because um, teams just do not want to guarantee money when they know that, you know, the Chiefs can go win a Super Bowl with Isaiah Pacheco and a guy off the free agent list. It's become a perfect storm, Huss. Like, it's just the perfect storm of everything. The position in sort of like the analytics sense has been devalued as the passing game and receivers have sort of, when me and you started watching football, the running backs were the guy. Like, yes, there were elite Hall of Fame all-world receivers, but most teams played, you know, we both had Marty Schottenheimer as a coach. It was three yards, three and a half yards, a cloud of dust, and let's just make sure we convert enough of those third downs. Um, a lot has changed. And they found inefficiencies in, in paying running backs and the combination of how much money you have to now pay the quarterback to be a good team has us in this collection of Super Bowl winning running backs that were – you know, just sort of run of the mill. And the Patriots never paid a running back. I mean, they got Corey Dillon off of, um, you know, in the same way they sort of got a lot of quality veterans who who you know, attitude issues are from other teams and came in and bought into the Patriot way. But, like, I just remember a bunch of guys, random ones, just running the ball there. And it set the stage. Eckler came back for some crumbs. And I don't mean to be rude, but the Chargers, you know, will throw you some crumbs. And he danced for him. Like, ah, he deserves way more. And that's a guy who's undrafted. 
So his like first handful of years in the league, he's making league minimum. So he doesn't even have the fallback. But now, I mean, Bijan got drafted in the first this year. It seems like it's hyper rare, though we just had two. As I'm saying that, like, you know, the Lions also made a decision to draft a running back as well. They're, I don't know. It's sad. I would argue each of them just have to look out for themselves. And worrying about protecting the collective as a running back, that seems kind of dangerous. All that being said, Huss, any football fan who has got a clue knows the Raiders paying Josh ja- uh, Josh Jacobs top dollar right now would be the dumbest thing they could do. We would snicker. Me and you would laugh through high yeah. heaven <laughs> if the Raiders gave that guy a multi-year top of the market extension. We would be so giggling at them. Which he's so absolutely I earned. I, I, yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> I mean... The, the way that the teams, and I mean, you nailed it. I mean, analytics has totally changed the way football teams are built. It is all about efficiencies, two contracts, in a cap system. And unfortunately, the running backs have been left behind because there are People so many talented players. People say that maybe players. the quarterback needs a separate cap. But wouldn't that just benefit teams like the Chiefs and hopefully the Chargers along? Like, Teams with the really great quarterbacks would probably just benefit from that system. If you're if you're now scaling how much we actually have to pay the very best ones. I don't know the yeah, solution. I, People are like abolish the draft and just make it a rookie salary cap and give teams that finish worse in the standings more money to be able to pay the 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 you know the better rookies more. I don't know that there's a solution. But I bet you every other position in the league is like, why do I care? Where's like the long snapper revolt? I mean, I don't mean that. Yeah. I mean that facetiously, but I'm sure they're like, where's the the left guard revolt or something? Like, it's all happening. I'm yeah. So I don't really have an answer, but I don't blame the. T- I don't know who to blame either. I don't know. No, you know what? It's a lot of people looking around saying it's not us, and it's true. <laughs> uh, but Eckler's the best example of them all. I mean, you nailed it. I kind of forgot that he was undrafted. I mean, so you literally are playing for seven, eight hundred grand for the first couple of years, taking all that abuse. I mean, a, a bell cow of bell cows for what he's played for the last couple of years and how much he touches the ball, how much he's helped his team win games, and it don't get reciprocated when your team when your time comes up because there's always another guy that's younger and fresher, that's ready to take your spot. And it is the cruelest section of a very cruel business uh, business right now. Just one last one for you on the way out. I know we saw D Hop get signed by the, uh, the Titans of all teams, which was interesting on the weekend. He pretty much put a Pro Bowl team together with all the free agents that are out. Are these guys just older that are going, you know what, I'm not going to be getting what I want. I'll wait to sign well into training camp and not have to deal with the first few weeks of August. Yeah, a lot of free agents, um, like all sort of across the board. You need a safety, you need a running back. Uh, there are people. I think it's sort of now the point where the teams feel like we maybe just go to camp and see where the players are like, I'm not taking any less money. You'll have an injury and you'll call me. Um, Hopkins going to Tennessee clearly shows like he's not interested in ring chasing at a discount like with the Chiefs or even another great team that was, would have been rumored. Dalvin Cook, the Patriots are now the favorite. When we all thought maybe to go to Miami, maybe to go to, to the Jets or uh team go to Buffalo, play this bro. No, so they don't seem interested in ring chasing. So they're waiting for top dollar. Yeah, I mean, especially the running backs, they got to do that because of how short their career is and how quickly they can get Wally pipped. The minute they miss a game for or two, um, hey, are you guys going to be doing any? Uh, guess what? The time difference is a very different schedule. Uh, will there be a Jeff, Pat, and Tim cut sweat episode on the Mayo Media Network coming up on Friday? Yeah, so we'll be live Friday afternoon, huh? It's not to you know throw it out there, it might even be up against <laughs> against you guys enjoying the end of the golf. I think that's just how the clock is going to work itself out. Although that daylight apparently, like. Looking at the tea times today, they're going off pretty late on Friday, and they got tea time. I mean, they got daylight apparently till till all day long. So uh, there will be a cut sweat. It will be earlier than usual. We had the West Coast U.S. Open 
And now we're on the complete opposite side of that here. Well, I'm uh, looking forward to it. Anyways, keep on uh, having a blast with the boys. Monday show, awesome as always. And uh, we'll be in touch and see what comes up when uh, they play for the fourth major of the year. And I guess at that point, we'd figure out what the hell this sport's going to look like next year and into the future. Yeah, that's a whole other situation. Um, I don't even know how to, that, yeah, I don't that's a whole other bag. Who the, who the hell knows? We'll 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 have time to talk about that when we get into the FedEx Cup playoffs or whatever for the tour that still exists here in North America. <laughs> Dude, thanks again for doing this. Uh, good luck with all your wagers and uh, have a good one. We always love having you on the program. Anytime, Huss. All the best. Right on. There's Jeff Feinberg. Give him a follow at G Feinberg seventeen and uh, all that content with Pat Mayo and Tim is over at the Mayo, excuse me, Media Network. Um, all right, we got to get to. Yeah, I saw Chris Vermet in chat wondering about a Cinnaboy Downs picks and plays. Oh, yeah, we've got those for you coming up in just a minute. Uh, but let me give a shout out to our friends at Little Brown Jug. Don't forget, Little Brown Jug is now one of the local breweries that is an official partner of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. So when you're at the game on Thursday and you're looking for something local, head by. The poutineries on either side or the hometown concession stands, that is where you get your ice cold, delicious Little Brown Jug 1919s. Of course, 1919 and generic is available at Winnipeg Gold Eyes Games as well. You can pick up all the great Little Brown Jug beers over at the uh, brewery and tap room on William Avenue and uh, anywhere in Winnipeg that sells great beer. And I can guarantee you we'll be having quite a few of those a week tomorrow at our Gold Eyes game. We are so looking forward to this. Well over 60 tickets sold already. We're going to have a big Winnipeg Sports Talk crew. If you haven't already, folks, go over to winnipegsportstalk.com. Click on the link. Tickets are 15 bucks all in. We'll have WST koozies for everyone while supplies last. Some other great prizes. And we'll enjoy a few 1919s together, a few generics, some, maybe a barbecue bowl, pierogies, butter chicken, Goldie dogs. God, just thinking about the menu is getting me fired up. Uh, Gold Eyes are back next week for the entire week, but we want to see you for our WST night. Go to winnipegsportstalk.com right now. Grab your tickets. We'll be sending them out to everybody on Monday. You've got until the end of Friday's show to order your seats. So uh, grab a few friends. And join us coming up on Wednesday for a little Gold Eyes baseball. Of course, we just had a great time talking with Jeff Feinberg, talking golf. When we do our golf reports, we do it for Breezy Bend, one of Manitoba's top private clubs. If you're thinking about a long-term home for you and your family, and one of Manitoba's great courses with the best social scene around, make it Breezy Bend. Get on the waiting list for next year. BreezyBend.ca for more information on that or give the clubhouse a call and talk to our pal, Corey Johnson. And I got to give a big shout out to Aikens Lake. Pitt and the gang are readying for my return coming up in early August. I can't wait. It truly is my favorite three or four days of the year. Every year when I've been lucky enough to get up there, if you were thinking about a world-class fly-in fishing adventure where you can be on the water in about two hours from the city of Winnipeg, Aikens is the space, is the place. And listen, as great as the world-class fishing is, the only thing better is the incredible hospitality of the uh, Turen family and the Aikens Lake team. Check it out online, Aikens Lake Wilderness Lodge, AikensLake.com. You can always find out about, there still might be a couple of spots left to book this year or booking well into 2024, so get on it right now. You can also hit Pit Turen up on Twitter, at Aikens Lake. All right, I was just saying to Vermette, we will have our picks as uh, so I see Kabilis in chat, the who's who of WST will there. Yeah. While we're at it. Hey, everyone, if you've already got your tickets, you've already count yourself in, let us know in the chat. Be good to uh, maybe grind a few others that are thinking about coming to uh, stop being so shy and join us. Uh, and again, it is so much fun at the ballpark. We'll be eating, we'll be drinking, we'll be having some laughs, we'll be doing some prizing and there'll be a great time to get together with all of them. Um, we're going to get to our Cinnaboy Downs picks in just a moment, I'll finish off with that. Remus had to jet. He's got an appointment this afternoon. 
So I will take us home. But before we do that, let's get to our cool bet lines. We sort of did a bunch of the golf lines right now. But right now for the Open Championship, as I mentioned, Rory's the favorite at 8-1. to one. Scotty Scheffler basically right there at plus 825. John Rahm at 14-1. to one. Uh, You can bet top 5, top 10, top 20s. Uh, there's make the cut props on tons of players. And then they're also grouped into, um, uh, you know, five person units where you can bet against each other. It's all there right now. Check it out. Uh, top nationalities as well. How many Canadians do we have in the, uh, in the field right now? I'll have to take a look at, uh, I'm just trying to find that one up right now. It's top seniors, former winners. I guess just two Canadians, Corey Connors, minus 200, Nick Taylor, plus 148, but uh, Kuwait has an incredible, incredible betting options for the Open Championship. We mentioned for the CFL coming up this week, the Bombers, 15 and a half point favorites, although I'm looking at the odds right now, and for some reason, the spread is off the board. Kenny Lawler, though, returning to the lineup tonight. Bombers are going to be pissed off, uh, but that's about as big a line as you've seen in a long time. Argo, seven and a half point road favorites in Hamilton against the Ticats. BC minus nine and a half right now at home against the Riders. That's been a bit of movement today. And the Stamps, five and a half point favorites against Dustin Crum and the Ottawa Red Blacks coming off that incredible win. Both of those teams having heart-stopping wins last week. That will finish things up on Sunday night. Uh, we got, oh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, basically six o'clock every night with the exception of the 7.30 game on Thursday. And for tonight... We do have a lock shop partner parlay. The exclusives, check it out. My daily pick, Dusty and I were both liking the Yankees to come back after blowing it last night to Otani. Uh, minus uh, 106, a pick them on either side. We're riding with the Yanks, but we have added the Braves run line. So Braves to win by two against the Arizona Diamondbacks and the LA Dodgers in Baltimore taken on the Orioles is a very slight underdog. We put those together for a lock shop partner parlay. It's paying plus 750. So if you'd like to ride with us, get on over to the exclusives. Don't miss the lock shop tomorrow. We will be making all of our picks for the Open Championship. That's going to be going on live at noon, one hour before Winnipeg Sports Talk. And get them in tomorrow because, as I say, that's going to be starting bright and early Thursday morning uh, with the time difference from over in the uh, in the UK. All right, to finish it up, we do have to get to our picks today for the track. I had a big one yesterday. Hit that triactor. Remember I said I was going to add that 30 to 1 horse in? Well, it came through. I think that $1, well, $6 bet paid $54. Um, so let's get this up here. We've got I'm going to get my selections and we'll work with Remus's as well at the same time. Starting it off, uh, race number two, I've got $3 on number four to win, Artesian Dancer. Uh, Remus is doesn't have one again until race three. Uh, so in race three, I am on number four as well to win. That is Shirley's Sherman. And what does Remo have here? Remo has uh, number three to win. That is favorite, the uh, appropriately named favorite, although it's not quite the favorite. Arm of Year, number six, and Uncle Mo's Cat are uh, the top two favorites. I'm going a little off the board with Shirley's Sherman. All right, back to the races. Uh, race number four, I don't have, and neither does Remus. So we go to race number five. And uh, I am rolling with a, a little parlay here. Another triactor, if you will, after the win last night. I'm going with, oh, these are Remus's favorite too. Shoot and money, drizzy, and bite the bullet bro. Two, three, and four. Remus is doing an exactor box with three and four. So his go-tos, shoot and money and drizzy, either way for a $3 exactor box. Now, I've got a couple more to give. Uh, race number six, I'm rolling with an exacta of four and five. That's burrow down and damn the torpedoes. Remus is going just to win number five, so he's got damn the torpedoes to win. Um, let me just confirm that again. 
Um, so I am race six. Yes, four and five. Damn the torpedoes. And then finally for race number seven, I'm putting just a toonie on Trump um to win. And that horse has not been very good, but then it was finally won again as a big underdog last time. And this is a short race, five and a half furlongs. It's number nine. And I'm actually going with the seven, eight, nine. So all the horses on the outside for a little triactor. Seven, eight, nine. Remus's selection is uh, he's just going with seven to win. So Mr. Dazzle at five to one. So there are picks right now. It all gets going at uh, 7.30. It starts. You know, it's not, doesn't look like a great night out, but obviously you can be uh, well sheltered from any inclement weather out of the Cinnaboy Downs. And if you do want to stay home, you can make your picks over at hpibet.com and then uh, watch it over on the Cinnaboy Downs YouTube channel. Their preview and pick show starts at 645 with far more research and experience than we do with ours. That being said, I'm hot right now. I couldn't pick a winner for a month and a half, four straight days. I've been uh, comfortably ahead and I'm making up some, uh, making up some ground on Michael Remus. Um, it's been a weird show today. Uh, we have to give a big shout out to our pal, Alex, who came in, negotiated us through a power outage, got us back on the air. And of course had a great show with Morgan Barron with Mike McIntyre and my pal Jeff Feinberg and of course Remus as well earlier on in the program. Tomorrow on the show, uh, we're going to have Marata Tesh and we will also have one Dustin and cannot wait to talk to Dusty about the upcoming week in the Canadian Football League and uh, his recollections. He had two of the greatest calls all year. The Taylor Cornelius, what is he doing? And then, of course, the uh, his his patented line, what is happening when all hell broke loose between the Stamps and the Riders last week. We'll get his thoughts. He will be calling the game here in Winnipeg on um, on Thursday. So we'll look forward to having Dusty in the house for that. But he will join us tomorrow in addition to Marat and uh, maybe another golf guest as we get ready for tee off at the Open Championship. That is going to do it for us, gang. Thanks so much for being a part of the show Hit that thumbs up if you haven't already. Tell a friend about Winnipeg Sports Talk. And if you haven't already, make sure you've hit that red subscribe button. And for podcast listeners, hit us up on YouTube sometime. Get us a, give us a sub on the YouTube channel. And for everyone on YouTube, sometimes if you can't make the show, subscribe wherever you get your favorite podcast. Just search Winnipeg Sports Talk. Count yourselves in for that, and it's always available for you if you can't join us on the show on YouTube. All right. For Michael Remus, Alex Allard, I'm Andrew Patterson. Thanks so much. Remus just going to pump, toss some plates around at uh, his favorite gym. I think he's a big, uh, big good life guy, actually. So Remus, probably a good life right now. As you can see, you don't get that physique without, uh, without spending a lot of time in the gym. Um, but anyways, great show today. Thanks to Alex for getting us through. Thanks to all of you for hanging out. We'll see you tomorrow with Marat and Dustin Nielsen on a Wednesday hump day edition of Winnipeg Sports Talk. Have a great night, everyone, and see you tomorrow. Oh, my God. Oh! Shut it down. Let's go home. Thanks for tuning in to Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast feed at winnipegsportstalk.com. 